channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of Potomac. And this is season. Hold on, season nine, episode um, seven, and this is called um, Hard Launch Soft Landing. So this, to me, I don't know about y'all, but this kind of felt like a filler episode, honestly. Um, I'm glad though that they are finally out like Norman. They back at the Potomac of it all. Um, <laughs> because child, Mia, Mia is a horrible host, hostess. She's just, it's, it, it ain't it, it ain't it. But anyway, oh, and side note, hopefully you guys like my hair. I tried to do something different. So I had my hair in twisties yesterday and then I twisted them out. And so this is the result, you know, trying to promote hair growth and all that good stuff and mixing it up. So you'll probably see my hair like different, like a lot now. Um, also too, when I switch up my looks and change things up, it kind of helps with my seasonal depression because we know it's that time. Um, it's actually already dark outside and it's been raining all day. So my mood is not necessarily the best. But we're going to make the best out of it like we always do. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode actually started off where we see that they're finally back in Potomac, thank God. And they're just doing, they're kind of just showing like a little bit of like a, a housewives montage, if you will. So we see Karen um, watering her plants and talking to her plants. Um, we see Mia with ink. Um, and then I'm trying to think, was there anyone else in this montage? I think that was pretty much it when it came to the montage of it all. And then the first official scene that we have is actually with Stacy with TJ. So, um, Stacy's actually not at her home that she has with her, you know, ex, well, going to be ex-husband and daughter. She's at her launch pad, the, um, kind of her bachelorette pad that she has in, um, I can't remember if she has it in Baltimore or in D.C., but she has it in the city. Um, I don't remember which one it was, though. I think it's D.C. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but anyway, so she's there. She's there with TJ. They're kind of having like a little cute besties day. And full transparency. Okay. I know, I know all the reviewers are kind of getting on this whole storyline of like, child, this man don't want her. And... I don't know if he does or not, and that's none of our business, but it does seem like he is fulfilling a spot that she is needing. She needs a close, close friend in her life, and it happens to be TJ, and TJ's fitting that role. And um, at this moment, maybe she isn't necessarily needing the sexuals. Maybe she wants, I mean, clearly she wants that, but... Does she need it right now? Probably not, considering the fact that she's still married. Um, and they're just kind of at the beginning stages of the deliberation of it all. And so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave the rest of that whole thing alone because it's kind of a walking read. And, and I mean, everyone's talked about it. So it is what it is with that. But the reason why I say that is because this was actually kind of a cute scene. And, we actually, and I did actually, I could kind of see... From Stacy's in the chemistry. I don't know if he has it for real, for real, but I can see why she likes him. He seems very safe. And when you're going through some things, all you want is safe. And it seems like for her, he gives and provides a safe, soft landing. And because when they actually are talking, talking, I see the chemistry. Um, but like, Maybe because she's not used to like really being on the dating world and all that. It takes time to know that there's a difference between like a safety net and a close friend of the opposite sex variety versus like them actually being a potential partner. I know she sees him as a partner, but again, I'm not sure if that makes sense. And also too, I don't know if she's someone who's a type of, because there are some women out there, um, I'm not one of them, um, who are not able to just have guy friends. I have guy friends. You know, I have close guy friends who I would never cross that line with ever because they know me too well. Like, that's like big bro or little bro. 
And I mean that like actually, um, because they know too much about me. <laughs> but all seriousness, I would want that in a partner too. I would want someone to know too much about me as well. But you know, there's a difference. And I know not all people believe that you could be friends with someone of the opposite sex without meaning more. Um, and maybe she's one of those people who doesn't realize you could just be friends with someone from the opposite sex and there's nothing there from a romantic standpoint. There still can be intimacy um, because also too, I feel like people do not talk about this enough. Intimacy is not just sex. I hope y'all realize that. I hope we're grown enough to know that that is not, that is not the only form of intimacy. You have intimacy within your friendships. You have intimacy when it comes to like your family members. Not and not in that kind of way, like a closeness where you have trust, there's a soft landing, you have a place to actually wow, soft landing. It's the the title speaks for itself, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, it seemed like you know, I this this was the first time where I was like, oh, I could kind of see where she's coming from with this. Um, now his motives, I'm not sure if they're pure or not because he's an actor. So that's one of those things that's hard to read. I mean, but that is what it is. But anyway, I know I went off on a long tangent, but I promise you this review is not gonna be too long. But um, basically the first thing is they're painting, they do, a, they do portraits of each other and then they talk more about what's going on with her divorce. That's pretty much what happens here. And yeah, and then we go on to the next scene. So the next scene, we are actually at Ashley's house and um, Ashley um, is kind of do, putting like this little mini brunch together and Giselle comes and joins her, helps her set up and then Karen joins too. But before Karen joins Giselle and um, Ashley, they're talking about like Norman, kind of recapping everything that happened there um, and then really talking about Karen and if she really is okay because they are concerned for Karen and her well-being because we also have the countdown going on. It's only five days before she has to go to court um, for her DUI. Um, and I'm not going to say allegedly because that's what they're, they're, that's what the court is for. And so I can tell Giselle is actually genuinely worried. And even Ashley, to a certain extent, seems like she is worried too. Because even though, okay... I don't really like, y'all know I don't like Ashley. I don't see it for Ashley at all. But I feel like outside of this show and outside of her doing her job, because I think that is her job to stir up mess and drama, I think in real life, I'm not sure if she's like that. Which is why <clears throat> all those years when um, Candace and Ashley were on the show together, I think that's why you kind of got Candace going back and forth and kind of coming off a slip floppy because I'm pretty sure outside the show, outside the show, um, Ashley is not how she is on this show. So I think on the show she puts on that she's a lot more messy than she is in real life. And so I think that is kind of why there's a lot of confusion. It has been confusion for years when it came to that. But anyway, I'm saying all that because I think, um, I think the ladies are worried for Karen because if this is her second DUI, they kind of go over it in the second. Um, they go over it in the previews for the next episode, all the things she could be facing if convicted. She's got to sit down for a little bit, like literally. Like there will be some jail time if she like, you know, you know, gets convicted, which is probably, that's actually the other thing. That's literally probably the main reason why she's fighting it because... If this was like her first one, I think Karen would maybe own up to it. Maybe because there would be less on the line. And I really wish people would like be aware of that and know that. Um, Cause I, I do see that there are people that are condemning Karen for her not owning up to it, which it's not okay that she's not. And really if she, you know, in real, in real life, she probably should have just like sat this season out, but you know, you're going to not do your job for a year? A high paying job? And this is her high paying job? She's probably one of the more paid housewives because she's kind of, you know, one of the mainstays of the show. 
Yeah, you're going to do the show. <laughs> and you're going to do what Karen does, which is deflect. Um, and even speaking of Karen, so she shows up and she actually does do exactly that. She deflects. She does talk briefly about the case and how she's worried and she's concerned. But other than that, she talks about Mia and the opiate thing. And then the shady producers show that video of, you know, Mia confessing to the fact that she did have an opioid addiction. Um, it was like a news, it was a news thing that she did. Um, I think right at the beginning of when she first joined the show. It really wasn't that long after she first joined the show. And then outside of that, and Giselle, both Giselle and Ashley know she's deflecting. And so after they talk, after she talks about that, and because Giselle's trying to get them to patch things up, like, look, that was kind of low for you to bring that up. And, you know, Karen's like, well, she was coming for me, so I came for her. And so then from there, they go from talking about that to talking about um, Giselle and how she feels about um, Jamal being engaged. Um, fast forward, guys, and this is, I don't usually do the spoilers of it all, but Jamal Bryant did get married. Um, he, that actually came out like this past weekend, so he is married now. But apparently, um, the daughters did not know that he had a girlfriend. So he went from having a friend to they they engage and but the thing is though i feel like in grown people talks that's my friend that could mean that could mean that could be your like your thing thing like your girlfriend or boyfriend it could mean that but it could also mean friend it could, you it just depends on what what where, where are you from and whatnot because in the south and even my grandma used to say this like like when i was in a long-term relationship with uh, almost a fiance, not quite. Um, yeah, she always would call my friend. <laughs> but anyway, so um, Giselle knows that Karen's deflecting by talking about this. And Giselle's like, I don't feel a way about this. As long as Jamal's happy and the kids are taken care of, that's all that matters to me. And that's pretty much all that happens with this scene. Again, not much. Moving on. Okay, the next scene is with um, Wendy... And she's with her whole entire family, including her mom. And she's celebrating a couple things. So there's a couple graduations that happen. So her daughter um, graduated pre-K. And then one of her sons graduated um, elementary school, is now going to middle school. So there's just a lot to celebrate. And they're just having a celebration, like a little lunch situation. And then from there, they talk about... Um, them finally meeting up with Eddie's family. And the huge problem that seems to be a, a issue is they're not sure if they're going to even meet the parents um, because Eddie and Eddie and like Wendy and all of them have been estranged from the whole entire family, not just the parents, really for years. And Wendy's like, I'm hoping the parents do show up and things go well. And you know, the mom has a lot to say. <laughs> Wendy's mom wants to be a housewife so bad. I, I, not to be mean and not trying to be shady, but she it's clear she loves that camera. She loves the camera. She was being extra this whole entire scene. Because she also was like, oh, so... Because they're planning this whole entire event so that they can meet up. And it's an all-white event um, to meet Eddie's family and stuff again. And um, Wendy's mom's like, oh, so this is why I didn't get my allowance? And I was like, wait, huh? <laughs> and we learn in Nigerian culture, your parents take care of you until you're a certain age. But then once you're a certain age and you are well established, uno reverse. You take care of your parents until for till the rest of their lives, basically. Which interesting <laughs> and but anyway the, the main purpose of this scene though was that um there still are some potential unresolved issues and hopefully things don't get too messy and they can finally move forward because we also find out the parents never met the kids and these parents never met the kids and i'm sorry but like that is trash I don't care what culture that is. That is basula. 
I, I, I would, I hopefully we get, we get to know why and get to hear their side of why, but I'm looking at them like not good. Cause I'm just like, why there's to me, there's no reason why there's no reason why that should have happened that way. But anyway, well, hopefully more will be developed as the season arises and as we see things and, you know, moving on. Okay. So then next we have another scene with Ashley. And um, I'm, I'm giving that look because I'm like, oh, wow, Ashley's actually featured a lot in this episode, which is probably why I thought this episode was a filler. No shade, no shade. But like, let's be real, Ashley ain't got much going on. Um, so they talk about Ashley. So her mom shows up, Sheila, um, at Ashley's house. And those kids, child, her sons. And maybe because I'm not a parent, I don't get it. But when I see her sons and seeing that they're all up on those countertops, standing and stuff on it, I'm like, oh, this is what gentle parenting looks like. No, thank you. <laughs> this new age parenting of like, if you don't get off the counter right now, like maybe I'm used to more of that. <laughs> Cause I'm just like looking at this like, man, what? Like, I can never see me being able to be, like, on a countertop and standing as a little as a little girl. Absolutely not. And also, too, I was very tall, so I probably, probably would have literally broken the... Like, I, yeah, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> it would have never worked. Um, although I did get into some things, but, like, I didn't do it right in front of my parents' face. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's kind of crazy. But, uh, anyway... <laughs> But so, yeah, Sheila pops up. And so Ashley is having a heart to heart with her mom because I guess now that Ashley is finally going through with this divorce, because um, she, she finally sees life in the tunnel, according to her, she feels like her confidence is building now that she's been able to, like, you know, handle and watch the kids and all that on her own. Um, for the most part, she has a newfound respect for her mom because her mom's a single parent too. Um, but she's also trying to get that leech that is dating um, Sheila off of her because we also found out that so before that Sheila does have some health issues going on right now and she's only 58 and she's working 12 hour days. And side note, number one, I did not know she was only 58. 58 is young, and to put in perspective, don't do the math on me now, that's only 18 years older than me. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but she is a hard 58. I'm just gonna keep it real. Um, you could tell that she's had some hard times in life. Um, and, and that's and that's no disrespect. I'm like saying she's a hard 58 because, you know, when you've been through some things, it's all over your face. It, it's all over your body. It's everywhere. You be you be knowing like it's, it's one of those things. And um, especially since she's still working 12 hour shifts, like at this point, she should be at the tail end twilight of like her years. And I feel bad that she's still just grinding as if she's in her 20s. Like, I'm not even, like, truthfully, I'm not even grinding that hard like that anymore. Like, I grind like that in my 20s and early 30s so that I can now, now I'm at the point where I'm starting to just coast. I'm going to go on auto cruise until retirement age, and then hopefully I can retire a decent time and be done. Um, I might still get a side hustle here and there because I do like to work, but, like, you can tell with Sheila, she doesn't have a plan. She has this man who's leeching off of her. And then they do show a flashback of Ashley actually talking to her mom about this. And her mom still is with this dude. He still isn't doing anything. He has a job now, but the job ain't nothing. And Ashley's just like, I just really want better for you. Because her mom speaks all these positive things to her, but she doesn't see it for herself clearly. And... Which is why, you know, I feel like a lot of the issues outside of Michael being just like Gollum <laughs> from Lord of the Rings. Um, I think the mom situation did not help things at all. But, you know, 
that's neither here nor there. But like, I will say this, even though I don't like Ashley, I was actually kind of touched by this scene. And hopefully, um, I don't see her ever getting through to her mom because it's been, this is, Everything that Ashley's talking about in this scene and really overall when it comes to Ashley's storyline, nothing has changed. It's been, she's been stagnant on this show for years, which is why most people, including me, don't think she should be on the show anymore because nothing's changing. And I want to believe this divorce thing is going to happen, but I still don't, I, you know, because it's Ashley, it's hard to believe it because she's been dragging her feet on it. But in realistic standpoint, if it wasn't Ashley, I could understand why it would take some time. Because of, you know, her background and everything else. But because it's Ashley, I'm side-eyeing it. It's like, just like whenever Mia talks, I side-eye everything she says. I don't believe nothing. Um, but anyway, that's it for that. All right. So next we are at Jazzy's event. And I'm just so happy that Jazzy, who's a friend of, has an event. And sorry, no, Jacqueline was barely in this episode. And... I, I was happy for it. <laughs> I was happy for it. But everyone else was on the episode dressed to impress. And um, we um, we basically get to meet all the men. Um, and everyone is kind of there just showing out. And really, not much happened. Ironically, when it came to this event, you would have thought more would have happened. But not really much happened here. Um, Jazzy did a toast to her man and stuff like that. Um, they did, Darius was there, so everyone met Darius. Um, all the ladies met Greg, um, KK's, um, man. Um, everyone met TJ and Wendy. <laughs> I love Wendy, because Wendy was just like, when I met TJ, I knew exact, I knew what kind of man he is. He's not having sex. I'm like, duh. <laughs> oh, but anyway, everyone looked beautiful though. I'll just say that. Um, and then everyone met Ink. Ink was looking good. Um, Mia seemed pretty happy. Um, and then, yeah, everyone. Oh, and then Karen showed up with Vivian. So. Honestly, why isn't Vivian the friend of the show and not Jack? I'd rather Vivian be friend of the show versus Jacqueline. I like Vivian's energy way more than Jacqueline. Bravo, you guys next season. Can y'all just make, make Vivian friend of and make sure Jacqueline stays far, far away from the friend of role in the future? Please and thank you. Anyway, so Vivian was there and they were kind of matching. Like they had similar like dresses. It was given, it was kind of given Destiny's Child. Similar like um, dress like um, fabric, but then different color. Um, cute, 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 cute. So now everyone's there, all the ladies are there. And Mia and Karen kind of, well, first Mia and KK get into it. Cause she's like, Mia, I'm gonna need you to apologize. My man is not a drug dealer. And then Mia and her, and this is why I can't get with Mia ever. She's like, I can tell he's a social worker. As if that's a dig. I'm like, <sighs> I have a problem with people who do that. Like, so you're going to downgrade him because he does something well for the community. And side note, Giselle's one who actually made uh, me apologize, if you notice. But, okay, I I'm sorry. I stumbled on my words a little bit because this episode... Why was Giselle the peacemaker twice? Why is she the peacekeeper? I, I didn't know how I felt about that, but I also kind of got how she's she's doing that. She's trying to get the girls together. Because right now, it's, it's the opposite dynamic. So right now, Karen's under attack. So she's doing the things that normally like um, Giselle will be doing. And Giselle's actually doing what would Karen be doing. It's very odd. It's so weird. Um, but anyway. So Mia does apologize, but it's like a half apology. So I don't think that, I don't think it's over with between KK and uh, Mia. Um, especially once KK sees the, the tapes back and how she kind of shaded her man still some way about the social worker thing. I think she's going to get her together come the reunion if she doesn't get her together again. Um, and then from there, it goes from Mia versus Karen again. 
And uh, Giselle immediately, because you see they're kind of go, going into it, Giselle's like, okay, let's go, 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 sit down. So at first it was three of them, but then all the other ladies start gathering up, just like, ooh, 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 just like watching. And um, Karen apologized, Mia apologized, but really Karen apologized, like, I'm sorry I brought the whole opi opioid thing. Because Mia was like, girl, that was not okay. I never went to rehab for that. I actually overdosed. I was like, but... Okay. I'm trying so hard not to be shady. Because I have questions, okay? She, because in her confessional, Mia did explain what caused all this to happen. But because it's Mia, I don't trust her. So I don't know if it's really true. Also, too, my follow-up question, is that the reason why her skin looked like that? I'm sorry, okay, guys. I'm sorry. So I, and I know I'm not the only one thinks that, but like, if you, you know, are making the coins like you claim you're making, why are you not prioritizing self care and taking care of your skin? This, these are the questions that I want. I'm just asking. I'm asking. Okay, I know my skin isn't perfect. I know if I really want to, I could get Botox because whenever I do this, you could tell. But like at the same time, I know once I start doing Botox, I can't stop. So therefore, we're not going to do that. And also too, I think my skin is very smooth. Like I have moments where I got some blemishes here and there, but I have smooth skin. I don't have what she got going on. So I just have questions on that. Um. Okay, yeah, I was being shady. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Okay, so I'm apologizing now too, okay? Anyway, but Karen did apologize, but she was like, but also too, just don't, don't, don't start and I won't be none. I was like, so it's young, it's giving young bloods, young bloods and little Johns. It, yep. Young blood and little John and East side boys. If you know, you know, don't start no ish, won't be no ish. Okay. If we don't give a damn. Y'all know the words. Anyway, <laughs> so they did patch things up and really... I think that's pretty much all that happened at that party. Again, it was not as eventful as we we thought it was going to be. Um, but anyway, moving on. So next we see Karen. She's meeting up with her cousin, um, David. And we met David a couple of times. Um, he's, I think, one of the cousins or family members that's in Surrey County. Um, and they actually show a PSA of her promoting Surrey County. Because, um, you know, she's converting her family's land into kind of like a... A historical site for people to come check out and stuff like that but anyway she's having lunch with her cousin and she's just like really opening up to a certain extent the way Karen will open up because she still isn't really opening up um, about her situation um, but she still is not she's being vague and not talking about the actual DUI part she's talking about how she just has not really grieved um, she just pushes things aside. And honestly, if you really think about it, even the way she's acting right now on the show, she's still pushing things aside. She really isn't dealing with anything. Um, because for someone, because and I'm going to say this, like if you're someone who deflects and the way she deflects so well, you know she's doing that to herself, right? So that can't be good for her either. And my takeaway from this scene is, does Karen have a drinking problem? Maybe. Do I think she's an alcoholic? I don't think so. I think she has a drinking problem and I think she, and, but I think the reason why she has a drinking problem because I think she actually needs to go to therapy and truly work on herself actually and stop deflecting because the deflection isn't just happening with outwardly deflecting. She's inwardly deflecting too. She's deflecting all the way around, which is why she's able to skate through things. She's doing this when it comes to all of her issues instead of actually dealing with her issues. And um, I really hope she figures that out. Um, I don't feel sorry for her when it comes to what she did because what she did was wrong. And the fact that she's not owning up to it to a certain degree is pretty messed up. But I understand why, because she has a lot to lose for 
owning up for all the charges she has. Again, if she owns up to that, she can, she's probably gonna be sitting down. Like she is probably gonna serve some jail time. Considering it's not the first one, and I'm not sure when the last one was. Um, but if there hasn't been enough time that's passed between that, they can throw the book at you. Like, the, the law is not too kind for you making the same mistake twice. Especially that kind of mistake. Um, especially since she had, like, expired plates and all these other things would have relate in relation to her car. And the fact that she actually crashed her car and stuff like that. Um, but we also find out in this scene that she was actually on the phone with David as she did that. So he heard the crash and everything. And so he starts breaking down and crying. And she just gets really, really emotional. It's one of the rare times where you see her not holding it together. But even when she's explaining to like Dave, David about how she feels like she always has to hold it together, she's still trying to hold it together. And it's like, Karen, hopefully she'll get to this point, but like vulnerability and transparency, I mean complete transparency, that's a superpower. Once you realize that, sky's the limit. And that's something I had to learn through years of therapy. Like if it wasn't for me going to therapy, there's no way. I would probably still be a lot like Karen. I, cause I, and I, I still am guilty of doing that to a certain extent where I deflect, deflect, deflect. Um, rather talked about other people's issues, not my own. <laughs> um, even this past weekend, I was like, okay, I need to hang out with some of my friends. I need to tell them what's bothering me. Cause I had something that happened last week and it's still kind of lingering. And, um, I had to talk through it and I, I did. And it, I felt better for talking about it. And the more I talked about it, the more, and even getting the validation, like you're okay to feel a certain way. And sometimes you just need someone to tell you you're okay to feel a certain way. Because with me, I don't react anymore like I used to. I just internalize how I feel a lot or used to. I don't anymore. Now I just like, I wait till I'm okay to, for words to word. And then I say, you know what? Because <laughs> let's have a real conversation. So there was some, something that happened where someone tried to do me dirty earlier on this year. And um, I kind of maybe spoke about on this channel how I had a little bit of a situation for a second. And long story less long, I was sighing the situation from the beginning. And it turns out I was right. But like, it was not a good right. This person is Basula. <laughs> and I knew I was right and I dodged a bullet. But I'm more upset at the fact that like, this person tried to play in my face <laughs> and thought I was dumb. And, but at the same time, I always, I have to keep telling myself this to make myself feel better a little bit. Is like, I'm so glad that that person met this version of me and not the truly toxic version of me that I was in my 20s. Because our world would have been messed up. Because I would have kamikaze everything. <laughs> and I don't know if they watch this or not. I don't care. But I'm just saying. If you know, you know, and if I'm talking to you, if, and if it, apply, if it applies to you, it applies to you. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm not. Um, so yeah, um, I really think Karen, though, does need to, back to Karen, she really does need to deal with her feelings, deal with her emotions, handle them in a very healthy manner, have a safe space, a safe space a safe landing of someone to talk to. And maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe she doesn't feel like she has a safe landing or anyone to talk to. A soft landing, if you will. See, now I'm understanding why this episode's called that. But anyway, that's pretty much all that happens here. And the final scene, child, was a mess. Okay, so somehow I dragged this re review to be longer than it was supposed to be, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Let's just keep it going. So the last scene is with Mia and Ink, and they're with the kids. And it was really awkward because like the kids are just, 
I don't know. I have questions. Um, <laughs> but then Gordon just pops up like he lives there. And then it goes, it does not stay okay. It goes left real quick. And because Mia wants to talk to Gordon about the arrangements of things, but Gordon refuses to talk to just them three with the cameras being there. He will only go there if the kids are there too. And I understand why, because Mia can't be trusted. I agree. But at the same time, Gordon, I'm speaking directly to you. You knew what it was when you signed up. I'm sorry, but not sorry. I don't, I, as much as I want to have empathy for Gordon, I cannot. I cannot. Because you put yourself in this spot. You should have stuck with your wife and not do some trash movement and, you know, try to grass is greener the other side of that. It wasn't so green after all, was it? Because as soon as your green was gone, she was gone. Let's just say that. But anyway, so they pretty much get into it right away. And Ink intervenes right away too. And it's just, it's, it's a mess. And they're not... Mia saying that they're getting along very well and doing just fine. No, they're not. Because Gordon immediately says, like, look, I know you think that I like this arrangement. I don't like this arrangement. I don't like this. Like, he's the side dude, and he's in the house now. You cheat on him multiple times. You cheat on me multiple times with that man. And then blows up her spot and said, like, yeah, you get, you cheat on him. The, you cheat on me with him, and he led you to getting an abortion. I was like, wait, What? And the thing that's, that's so trash about this whole entire situation, those kids are still in the house. And by house, I mean apartment. So, like, they can hear everything. And Mia saying she didn't want all this to happen, but I was like, girl, what did you expect? Actions have consequences. Anyway, but that's kind of where the episode ends, though. Um, they're not doing good, and I'm... I kind of uncomfortable watching this because it is giving Love and Hip Hop um, Potomac and I don't want to watch Love and Hip Hop on Bravo. Um, so there's that. Anyway, <laughs> that does conclude the video. Conclude the um, video. Um, yeah, I kind of stretched this more than I probably should have. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel to get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. And maybe next time I won't spill so much of my tea. But we know that's not true. You know I like to share just a little bit. But anyway, bye! Yeah.